Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I thought I'd get out today to Britain's only desert, apparently. <laughs> Some dispute that fact, but I think it's mainly based on um, rainfall. But the terrain does remind you of a desert. We're right on the coast here, southeast coast, and it's uh, part of the Romney Marshes. This is Dungeness specifically. It's a very interesting place. I wanted to bring the drone down, but uh, you've got an airport. Um, you've got uh, military areas all around for training um, and you've got a nuclear power station as well so uh, they don't like drones around here. On the way here I visited St Leonard's Church in Hythe, it's just down the coast a little ways that way and um, it's a beautiful church. If you venture down to the crypt you're greeted by <laughs> a surprising amount of skulls and skeletons. It's been debated for some time what these skeletons were for, where they came from. Um, they, uh, they assumed they were from the Black Death or Plague at one point, but that didn't make sense because no one would be digging their bodies up. They were buried and covered in lime to decompose. But um, they've come to the conclusion they are local residents and um, they were dug up and all put down there in a small hallway. There's uh, over 2,000 individual skulls and the remains of 4,000 individuals, I believe. They range from men, women and children, which is uh, one of the assumptions which is out of the way that they were all soldiers, but the women and children and the causes of death kind of put an end to that as well. But it's an incredibly interesting place and I've wanted to visit there for some time and this seemed like the perfect excuse. The idea today is to find a camp spot. It's a, a bit, bit tricky around here, but you do have night fishing and stuff. And um, there is a uh, nature reserve that way as well. I don't want to go directly on the nature reserve, but there's a lot of this, um, this shingle grassy land around. So I'm sure I'll find a spot at some point. I've got plenty of time to look around. But uh, I do love this place. I've been here a few times before for photography reasons. Uh, it's an interesting landscape. You've got these interesting homes that are built from kind of fishing sheds and railway carts and old uh, life, lifeboat people houses, I think. Chalets built for the, leave, for the lifeguards or for the lifeboat operators. And you've got the famous lighthouse as well, which I believe has been rebuilt many times over hundreds of years. So let's have a bit more of an explore of the area before trying to find somewhere to camp.
the Dimchurch Railway. It's the smallest operational railway in the world. <laughs> it was requisitioned during the war to transport fuel by the army. I'll show you a picture of it, it looks quite interesting, all armoured up. <laughs> Just uh, having a recce for a camp spot. It's getting into the evening now. So, uh, not too much more sunlight. Not that the sun's been very shiny today. It was meant to be much sunnier, which is why I thought I'll come to the desert. <laughs> it's kind of more of a heathland here. So I'm just having a little wander around. It's quite flat, which makes you quite visible for a stealthy camp like this. There's some brush and stuff that I uh, might be able to hide in amongst. I certainly won't put the tent up till a bit later on. It's this or um, down by the beach, which is a bit windy. Jerky break. Problem with uh, wrecking your spot, especially if you don't take your pack, <laughs> I suppose that's what makes it wrecky, you've got to walk it twice. <laughs> and this shingle, let me get onto it. This shingle is some of the hardest stuff to walk on ever. Worse than sand. Oh god. Right, let's get there. Okay, I'm nearly at my spot, just by this lake here. I was wondering if you could guess what these are on the horizon here, just over the other side of the lake. Okay, I'll give you a few clues. I'll give you some uh, close-up shots. You can see the big concrete structures. One looks a bit like a satellite dish, I suppose. They're not some kind of tidal defense. They are sound mirrors or acoustic mirrors. They were used at the very beginning of the Second World War, pre-radar. And um, they would hang a microphone in front of them. You'd have someone stationed below and they'd be listening out for an early warning for incoming aircraft. I think you only got about 10 minutes warning on top of what you'd have from your normal hearing, but that was enough to scramble the nearby fighters from the airfield just behind there. It's a bit of a local landmark I'm camping by here. Well, I'm at my spot that I recceed, and it happens to be the same spot that I looked at on maps before coming here. I found this nice mossy patch here. We're in a bit of a dip, so it's not quite as windy. Over there, we've got our lake. You just about to see it poking through there. And another spot I was hopeful for was that, that little tree line there. It's only a small sort of copse, but um, it was too dense. It was just on the gravel really, so couldn't really set up there, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this little spot here. I've got more or less the same setup as on the beach a couple of weeks ago here. Uh, the Hex Peak, the Firmarest X Lite, and uh, my same summer, summer sleeping bag. The only difference I've made is um, this new ground sheet. It's if you've heard of a grabber um, space, space blanket, it's essentially the same thing. Them grabber ones, especially the green ones, are really expensive over here for some reason. This one's just made by someone else, but exactly the same thing. It's got um, all the uh, eyelets and everything as well, so you can use it as a shelter and things like that if you want to. But um, yeah, it fits this quite nice. I've just seen a couple of foxes run across the shingle over there, and we've got the birds roosting behind us. So um, it could be a noisy night, we'll see. <laughs> We've got the lake and the sound mirrors just over there. You might be able to hear the birds. 
if I swing around you can see them lights on the horizon there. That's the nuclear power station, so you can see how far we've come from that. Panning around. See the sun's just gone down, you've got the airport over that way. And this is where the tent is. A bit of a schoolboy error here. I've pitched my tent with the door opening onto this bush. So I can't really have my stove straight outside. I've got with me today the, um, the bush box pocket stove. Uh, you probably saw that if you saw uh, last week's video of me doing the mini breakfast and um, I've just got this mesh and this just fits inside the stove and over the front there where you put the wood in and that will just stop the pellets that I've got with me from uh, going through the air holes there. And I've also got um, a little windshield with me too. Oh. Quite knackered. It's getting dark now as you can see. I think first order of business really before food or anything else, even though I am quite hungry, is to have a beer. Oh, that's deserved. I've got another interesting drink for myself later as well. It's not mead this time. Well here's a new bit of kit, this actually arrived this morning, it's one of the UCO candle lanterns, not the micro one, I think it's the middle one, just pull that up, exposes the candle there, you can remove it from the bottom. There we go. So that's for when I can't take my, my full paraffin lantern, the storm lantern out with me. It's a nice lightweight alternative. These candles last, I think it's nine hours. So <laughs> they're very good. It's gonna last a few camps, that's for sure. You can hang this up or just leave it on the floor like I'm probably going to here because I don't really want to hang it up inside the tent. Put some foil down so I don't scorch the ground or anything catches. I'm just going to light this kitty litter with uh, one of these wood wall things. It's exactly like I did the other week actually. I also find that just um, putting kind of antibacterial hand gel on there works quite well. Just need something to get it going. Once it's going it's fine. And this windscreen won't only stop the wind, it will stop this fire being seen from, from afar. Not that there's anyone around. <laughs> Got some simple spam and eggs for this uh, camp and some um, kind of these deli buns, which is like a flatbread really. So I'm keeping it quite simple and I am starving. So I'm just going to cut this in the tub then fry it up with the eggs. When you put your oil on, that always tells you how flat you actually got it. In all honesty, I probably should have brought a spatula today. <laughs> I'm 
want to do this without scratching up our pan too much. Not too bad. I'm just on my second Spam and Egg sandwich here. Yeah? I thought to go with it. I've got a few tins of ready-made PIMS. If you don't know what PIMS is here in the UK, it's I think it's a vermouth-based drink um, that we drink in the summertime around barbecues. Um, yes, it's a bit feminine, but in the summertime you can get away with it. But these are hitting the spot. I was starving. I just wanted something simple to cook tonight. Just enjoy the exploration around Dungeness. I was going to bring a bivvy so I could just put down really easily, but I think there's meant to be rain in the morning now. That kind of changed at the last minute, so I thought it'd be better to bring the tent then I can pack up within it and then just take it down and get out pretty quick. We'll see how that goes. It'd be nice to have another proper look at the um, sound mirrors in the morning if possible. Look what I forgot I had. Some Jiffy Pop. We don't have this in the UK, so I'm quite looking forward to it. Switch to wood on the stove now. Let's give this a go. This is a butter Jiffy Pop. Well, I'm fairly certain not all of that has popped because this is meant to bulge right out. I don't know what really happened there. Oh, but we have got some popcorn. Yeah, there's plenty unpopped on the bottom there. Maybe that inconsistent heat from the stove. Still a bit of a treat.
Well, that's where I was, all packed up. I saw a dog walker in the far distance, so I thought I'd better get packed away. And uh, I saw this bone right next to camp. Don't know what it's from. But they're always interesting. I wanted to show you the Dungeness sound mirrors back where I was camping, but um, it's closed off at the moment. They're on an island and the bridge is swiveled round so you can't get to it. I don't fancy jumping. <laughs> so I've um, gone through all these nettles and brambles and thistles to show you the one at height, but uh, it seems they fenced it all off. I didn't realise that. You can catch a couple of glimpses of it, but um, you can actually see it better from up in the farmer's field up there. Uh, if you do hear any gunfire, it's not the farmer, the army are on the range over there at the moment. But yeah, I hope you found this one interesting. Sorry I couldn't show you the other sound mirrors a bit closer up. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Until then, stay safe.